as civilians in Gaza have been struggling to survive the war intensified there, one young uh, blogger's video diary has documented the struggles and tragedies people have endured in the enclave amid the conflict. Sinez Jemana Karachi has that. Life before the wars felt like a distant memory for video blogger Ayat Khadura. They were the days when she'd smile in her videos, taking her followers behind the scenes of her work in Gaza. For weeks now, her posts have been about life at a time of war. We now wake up at 5 a.m. to queue for bread. We now walk more than six kilometers to fill up a gallon of salty or fresh water. We charge our phones on the streets using the solar power we can find. We crave our favorite foods, but there's no power, no gas or water, so we have to make do with canned foods. Ayat showed people how Gazans survive, neighbors sharing the little they have to bake bread in clay ovens. And at times, it was about how close death felt as bombs rained down on Gaza. This might be my last video. They dropped leaflets asking people to evacuate the area. Most people fled. People were running in the streets like crazy, not knowing where to go. The situation is terrifying. God have mercy on us. As the war intensified in the north, Ayat didn't leave. The safety they were told to evacuate to in the south was an illusion. Nowhere in Gaza is safe, she said. Death and destruction is everywhere in Gaza. The occupation has no mercy on anyone, not the elderly, not the children, not the women, no one. All civilians are under fire in Gaza. Where are the decision makers? Where's the world? Gaza is being annihilated. We are dying. Someone do something, enough. But these desperate cries of so many like Ayat haven't stopped this seemingly endless nightmare for the people of Gaza, where burying their dead has become their every day, where every moment feels like it may be their last. On Monday, it was Ayat's killed along with other family members in a night of intense bombardment of Beit Lahia. Her last video, the haunting words of a 27-year-old with a final message from Gaza to the world. We're humans like everyone else. We had big dreams. Now our dream is if we are killed, we are a body in one piece so we can be identified, buried in a grave, not body parts in a bag. When will this war end? Who will remain to tell people what happened to us, what we lived through, what we've witnessed? Jemana Karachi, CNN, London. Now, the truce between Israel and Hamas appears to be holding, meaning other pieces of the deal are kicking into gear. A convoy of United Nations trucks packed with tonnes of humanitarian aid now moving into Gaza via Egypt's Rafa crossing. Let's speak to Eleni Jokos, who is live for us in Cairo. So it's playing out as you expected. We've talked about the amount of aid. It's not quite enough. Well, it's not nearly enough to deal with the problem there. But it is significant that those trucks are going in. It is significant, and it is significantly way more than we've seen since October 7th. Um, important to remember that before the war began, there were over 445 trucks um, going into Gaza on a daily basis on a good day. So this was a population that already heavily relied on aid. Um, and then you see the war breaking out, and now we're hearing the just absolute catastrophic scenarios on the ground and really reiterated by the international aid organizations. But I want to take you through what we've seen today. You and I have been talking about how much uh, we've been seeing, uh, you know, how many trucks have been gathering at the border over the last few days in anticipation for this truce to kick in. Because there is an understanding of just how many delays um, occur because of the checkpoints, because they need to figure out the logistics on not only the, the Egyptian side, but also once they cross over into Gaza. 90 
trucks, aid trucks, have now gone into the Gaza side of the border. That is significant. So they've gone through the initial checkpoints. They then get checked on the Israeli side of the border as well. Then they're all floated and then move straight into Gaza. Seven fuel trucks as well going in. We've also heard from the IDF uh, that say that the gas... Um, quota that has gone in already today is specifically for cooking purposes for humanitarian needs and humanitarian infrastructure. They've been very clear to say that this was part of the deal. Overall, over four days, 200 aid trucks are expected to go in, 130,000 litres of diesel fuel together with other gas trucks as well expected to go in. You've reiterated the point. Uh, it is a fraction of the needs. Even the Qataris said that uh, yesterday, you know, the, the the testimonies we've heard from uh, people inside of Gaza that they were scrambling for just pieces of bread, running out of water, di drinking dirty water, and of course diseases playing out right now, um, which has created another layer of the humanitarian crisis. Um, we also have heard from the Egyptians for the first time since the war started, Max, that Palestinians that are in Egypt or were stranded in Egypt, if they wish to return to Gaza, they are able to do so through Rafa. That is quite important to remember. And we've heard some movement on that that could be occurring today. Injured Palestinians are coming through the Rafa border. So too are foreign nationals and dual passport holders. Um, and, you know, just today, seeing some of the images that are going through, there were actually banners uh, on some of these trucks that read, together for humanity and then also for our brothers in Gaza. So everyone trying to take... Uh, you know, an opportunity here for this window that has opened up. But the logistical side, Max, we should not forget what it takes to actually get that aid distributed in uh, the south of Gaza in the very least. I was speaking to Oxfam a bit earlier. They were describing how uh, they've got this huge yeah. challenge because there's lots of aid agencies that were using um, crossings between Israel and Gaza in the past. They've had to move all of their logistics, all of their operations into Egypt, which has been a huge challenge. So this isn't, you know, hasn't been easy getting those trucks there for a start. Yeah, exactly. And I think that, you know, one of the things that we, you know, we keep talking about is just, you know, can we get more aid into Gaza? But logistically, it's always been a challenge. It's the warehousing. It's the logistical side of things. It's the value chains you really need to think of. And the fact that these trucks that do go into Gaza don't just drive into Gaza and distribute aid. They've got to be offloaded into trucks by the Palestinian Red Crescent. So there is so many elements to this. And it's also the checkpoints that really slow things down. You know, the UN's Martin Griffiths, specifically said that Israel has the final say on how much aid goes in and, of course, the IDF saying that they have been part um, of the deal in terms of the fuel question because we know that that has always been a sticking point because it, it could end up in the hands of Hamas. OK, Eleni in Cairo, thank you with you throughout the day as this story continues and the aid trickles in.